All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got my man, Frank Turek, back in the building talking about homosexuality from a biblical worldview. This is most definitely going to ruffle some feathers. I have no doubt about it that it's going to be a doozy. Stay tuned to the end if you want to hear my input and perspective. Let's get it popping. Do you find homosexuality to be a sin? Doesn't matter what I find. Okay, then I mean, what the do Bible, you believe the Bible says? Homosexual behavior is a sin, not homosexual feelings. We all have attractions we ought not act on, right? There's a difference between attractions and actions. I have attractions I ought not act on. So, so to be attracted to uh, someone of the same sex, if you act on that, it's a sin. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus says. You say, well, Jesus never talked about homosexuality. No, he talked about all sexual immorality because whenever he used the phrase sexual immorality, that meant any sexual activity outside of the marriage of a man and a woman. Fornication, adultery, homosexuality, bestiality, rape, incest, whatever it is. When he's using that phrase, that's what he means. And of course, Christians believe Jesus wrote the entire Bible through the Holy Spirit. So the entire Bible is inspired. Now, you can make other arguments uh, natural law arguments. I have a little book on this called Correct Not Politically Correct, where you don't even bring the Bible into it. But we have to have compassion for people that have these attractions. Why? Because they didn't, they didn't wake up one day and say, I want these attractions. They had them for whatever reason. And so we all have attractions we ought not act on. And so we all have to hold one another accountable to attractions or to actions that are going to hurt themselves or others. So it's not just homosexuality. The reason homosexuality is such a big deal in our society because all the political things going on around it. Right? So very last thing then on that topic, mm -hmm. by that logic you would be grouping homosexuality at the same wrongness as speciality and rape, correct? Well I don't... It's to not act my, upon it. It's not my opinion what's but right and the wrong. The Bible says that, correct? The Bible, well, not all sins are the same. People always say all sins are the same. No, sins aren't the same. Jesus implied that sins were different. He said to the Pharisees, he said that you have basically tithed your spices, but you've neglected the weightier matters of the law. Love, justice. So there, are, there is a hierarchy of sins. Sexual sin is not the greatest of sins, but it is a sin. And where homosexuality falls on that, that's not for me to decide. The Bible calls all sin, all sex outside of the marriage of a man and a woman's sin. Because, let's just take it from a very practical perspective. Very, very practical here. The culture tries to tell you that sin is just physical. I mean, sin is just physical. Sex is just physical. If that were the case, why is it that it's worse when somebody rapes you than when somebody just physically assaults you? Because sex is not just physical. It's emotional. It's moral. It's biological. It's spiritual. There's something beyond sex than just the physical act, and we all know it. Sex is like fire. If you put it in your fireplace, it will warm you. It's wonderful. If you get it anywhere else in your house, it will burn your house down. And we see that. Look, like homosexuals that. Didn't, didn't give us really same-sex marriage. You know who did? Heterosexuals through no-fault divorce. No-fault divorce is, is the worst thing that this country ever could have done from, from a marriage perspective. Because it makes marriage all about the desires of adults, nothing about Selfish. children. Well, if marriage isn't about children, why is the government even in it? Who cares who loves who? Why, why should the government care whether you have a romantic affinity for somebody else? The reason the government's involved in marriage is to perpetuate and stabilize society. That's why the government's involved. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I personally think Frank handled that like a pro. Even when they try to form the questions in a way that you would think would trap him, he eloquently handles it and gives perfect examples of being compassionate, respectful, and still having a firm stance on whatever the topic at hand may be. And all sins may not be the same, which he said that uh, it's true, but the wages of sin 
or death, spiritual, physical, and therefore eternal, that's terrifying to me. And maybe not to the person who doesn't walk in faith, whether you're watching this video or not, I'm going to be praying for you diligently because at the end of the day, you're going to have to face that judgment and that wrath at some point. All of us sin. All of us are imperfect. And that's why we look to Jesus Christ as the example, because he is and always will be perfection. He, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we need to look to him and face the consequences of the actions that we've exhibited in, in the world, whether it's, it's fleshly temptation, whether whether it's lying, cheating, stealing, whatever it may be, you need to repent from that. You need to drop to your knees, pray, and say, you know what? From here on, on, on forward, I'm changing my ways. I'm walking with the Lord. And although you may stumble, he'll always, always give you an option to, to choose the godly path or choose the, the sin-filled path. A lot of people in society today are choosing that sin-filled path. And it, results of divorce, whatever it may be, people are going into their, their fleshly temptation of uh, homosexuality, perversion, whatever it may be, diving into pornography. None of that stuff is right, and you have to make it right with the Lord. You have to get on the godly path or else it's going to get toasty. Some people don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. You can get as emotional as you want to. Society can latch on to all these ideologies in whichever direction and form or fashion they want to, but it's what's in God's word that matters. Not what we as humans think. We're mere mortals. So whatever you think is wrong, God is going to work it all together for the good for those that look to him. So you might want to straighten up. I encourage you to straighten up because living a life through Jesus Christ is always the better option. And that may offend some people. Again, this channel probably isn't for you, but I have to give it to you straight because I want you to be saved just how my wife saved me. I used to dive into promiscuity. I used to dive into pornography. I was into all of that sort of stuff before my wife seeing the hurt that that exhibited and put onto her shoulders before I saw how wrong that was and thank God for saving me. Some people want to hear my testimony and I, it's not nothing too crazy. I mean, I grew up in a single mother home. Uh, I say single mother. My father was an alcoholic uh, or my stepfather was an alcoholic. My actual father was more so, so of just like a sperm donor, but I was diving into promiscuity, sleeping with women out of wedlock, uh, doing all this, that, and the third. Thank God I didn't have any any babies uh, as an aftermath from my my sin and my uh, irresponsibility. But diving into pornography, I, I had the talk when I was like six, seven years old. I was told the porn was okay. Handle your business. You're a man. Take care of your, yourself. And at the end of the day, that that's selfish. It's sin. And it, it only leads to death. That's The wages of sin are death. So if I would have kept going down that path, more anxiety, more depression, more hurting women and treating them like objects and it never would have got me to heaven. And I'm, I'm praying every single day that God fills me with wisdom and keeps me on the right path. Thank God for my wife showing me the Lord is the way, the truth, and the life. That's the only way that you're ever going to overcome all the, the depression, anxiety, and animosity and, and darkness that you're going through. You got to look to the one light. That's Jesus Christ. And it would be wrong of me if I didn't dish out some biblical soul food. And although Frank didn't take it exactly to scripture, the way he preaches the gospel is very unique. And I love the way he uh, says, this isn't my opinion. This is God's word. This is what the Bible basic instructions before leaving earth says. So I got to take it to scripture, give you all some examples, even though I know Frank is well versed way more so probably than I am in my Bible. So first Corinthians six verses nine and 10 says, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God or revelers. I, my English, you know, gets a little twisted. I get passionate about this sort of thing, but do not be deceived. Don't don't believe what all the media hype says and and what TikTok and all these social media influencers are telling you. Neither the sexually immoral, the old idolaters, the adulterers, men who practice practice homosexuality, nothing like that is going to get you into the kingdom of God. You're not going to get to heaven if you keep practicing those sin filled ways. If you keep waging that against the Lord, He's going to bring that wrath. And some people don't like that. Some people don't want to face their sin the same way a thief doesn't run to a cop. They don't want to be caught and, and have to be held accountable for their actions. That's why people don't own up to their sin, because they don't want anybody telling them what to do. But at the end of the day, true freedom, I know this from being on the other side for trying to create my own path, for diving into all this wild, crazy activities and, and, and lust that I used to dive into. I know that that only leads to loneliness, depression, and ultimately death. It's much more, much more fruitful and much more peaceful in all aspects, when you find a spouse, when you when you hold that that sex into in the covenant, when you only lay it down with your partner, which is only man and women, anything outside of that is sin. It's not approved by God. It's not the way that's going to get you to heaven. And that's what I'm striving for. I'm putting all my eggs in that basket because if there there isn't a heaven, then none of this has any purpose. Then we have no purpose for doing anything. None of the the ways in which we think, none of the goals that we're pursuing, none of the ambitions and and ways we get up every single day going after 
things, none of that has any purpose. I know that we have a purpose, and that's why I'm going to continue to strive to get to heaven. And this is the only way by following these laws right here, by building your house on this foundation, that's the only way we're going to get there. Again, none of us are perfect. That's why we look to Jesus for perfection, for the example, for what to do and what not to do. But hey, I know these subjects are hard to digest. They're hard to talk about for some people, but we have to face them. We have to address them and we have to point out the truth and direct people towards the gospel that is Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life. That's Jesus. Keep looking at him for the example. If you like what we're doing over here, you like how we stand on those godly values, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all future videos share this video if you think it can help somebody else out there again shout out to frank turek and everybody who makes these sort of videos and messages possible did a great job in my opinion but outside of that if you want to support this channel you can always show my wife some love go check out her etsy store a bunch of christian designs and things of that nature made by my lovely wife on her etsy store always linked in the description got to get the plugs in outside of that you can always buy me a coffee tap the thanks button here on youtube join the patreon family all my links are in the description section but until next time I love y'all. I'm praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.